Now, this is the point in our ceremony when I give you my address as your class president. Um, right. Now, it is a long-standing tradition that the president of the class come before you today and give you a speech. I didn't know that. Um, many people apparently have pursued this position simply so they can give this speech. And I believe it was the beginning of this year when someone came up to me and said, hey, Joe, are you ready for your speech at graduation? And I said, yeah, yeah, sure, I, I got it. What? So, I did some research and it turns out that as your class president, it is kind of tradition for me to glean for you what really are the most outstanding morals that we can take from our experience in high school and reiterate them for you here today. But I really think that the best way to know our morals and what we've learned is to have been part of the experience. Nonetheless, today I have to say something. So I've gone back and I've thought about everything that we've done. And I believe that of everything we've done, there are three things that you can take most from our four years here in high school between us as a class and us as individuals. And the first one that I'll share with you is really the only one that comes directly from me. Do not stop learning with the end of high school. Because high school will end. And of course, I mean go on to college. If you can, college will make the rest of your life easier and your descendants' lives easier as well. Or so I've been told, I can't really say. I haven't really gotten there yet. But that isn't exactly what I mean. What I mean to say is that you as individuals have to learn every day. Because inevitably, we will mess up. Doesn't matter how good you are, how competent you are, what kind of skills you have, you will mess up, I will mess up, everyone in this room will make a mistake. That's the unfortunate truth, because we are human. Now, what makes the difference is that you take from that and don't let it happen again. It's one thing to trip along a branch as you're walking down the sidewalk, but it's another to trip on the same branch every day as you're walking down the sidewalk. It becomes a theme, and it becomes an issue. Now, I have a big head, excuse me. Now, this really leads up to the second aspect of what I'd like to say. Um, earlier this year, I was at a Board of Education meeting representing student interests, but I had a very hard time representing student interests. There were a lot of people speaking, there were a lot of people who felt very passionately about what, what they had to say, and I couldn't really find a moment to stand up. I couldn't really find a moment where I felt important enough to say what I wanted to say and represent what I wanted to. But then a man who was sitting behind me leaned forward and whispered in my ear, stand up. Stand up for what you believe in. And I did. And that's when it occurred to me that we have to stand up. That if we don't, imagine the consequences. Imagine a world where no one stood up against tyranny, where no one said anything about injustice, where unfairness was left unchecked. And so you as individuals need to stand up. You need to find what you believe in and you need to stand up and represent it. Because if you don't, no one will. And if you don't, it may be taken away from you. Now, I wanted to keep this short and initially this was where my speech was going to end. But in the past few days, I realized that there was something more I had to say. Um, some of you have heard this before. I hold this as a very dear moral. But I'll say it again for those of you that don't. A wise man once said to me, Son, as you go through life, you will draw horizontal lines as if across a sheet of loose leaf paper. Everything between these lines is who you are. Everything between these lines belongs to you. Now it is important that you don't draw these lines too low so that you'll, be, you'll own things that are below you. And it is important that you don't draw these lines too high so that you think too highly of yourself. Now, what my father was trying to say to me is that it is important that you know who you are. That you cannot possibly know where you're going in life. You cannot possibly know who you will become if you never get a sense of who you are and what you are. And just along that fact, how can you possibly stand up for, for what you believe in if you don't have an idea of who you are, a sense of your being? How can you possibly learn from your mistakes if you don't have a sense of who you are and how it affected your mistakes. 
So class of 2012, I'll say this to you once more in reverse order. Go out and learn who you are. Go out and stand up for what you believe in. Go out and learn from your mistakes. Correct yourself. Class of 2012, before we know it, we will sit here at our children's graduations. Soon enough, the world will be in our hands. Soon enough, our generation will be in control. If we don't learn from the past, if we don't stand up, and if we don't understand who we are, imagine what we'll become. For the last time, I part you with these things. I bid you adieu. Go out and seize the world. Thank you.